Let's talk about change management when you're using Mastercam for SolidWorks and the design needs to change and you need to update your toolpath. Now when you're working with Mastercam for SolidWorks, it's as easy as switching tabs to go between the design and the manufacturing environments. To program this part, let's go ahead and set up our stock. We'll use a cylindrical block oriented on the Z-axis and you'll see it automatically grabs the extents of the part. From here, we can add a 2D high-speed toolpath. To specify the pockets we need to machine, I'll simply grab a SOLIDWORKS Features, and when it's defined as SOLIDWORKS Features, it grabs the entire cut and all pattern instances without having to grab each one individually. We'll project that geometry to the tool plane so that it gives us the area we need to machine, and then we'll set the avoidance region on the top face of this part. We'll use the From Outside Machining Strategy, and all we need to specify from here is the tool that we're going to use. It's a quarter inch flat end mill and we want to set our depth to make sure that it cuts all the way to the bottom of that pocket. We've got our roughing tool path finished. Let's go ahead and drill those holes. We're going to use a feature based machining and we're just going to use a feature based machining drill and that's going to allow us to automatically identify and program all holes in the part in one shot. This toolpath is so easy to use, and you'll notice it picked up the correct drill for the whole size. Now let's talk about what we do if things change. To make a change, let's go back to the feature tree, and I'll go ahead and change the number of instances on this pocket from 8 to 6. Right after it rebuilds, it notifies me that a change has caused one of the toolpaths to be marked dirty. Now that's good to know, uh, but that's being automatically calculated in the background. Just to make the change a little bit bigger, let's go ahead and change the number of holes as well. And each one of those has marked a toolpath to be dirty. So by simply saying rebuild all dirty toolpaths, only the toolpaths that have been impacted by design changes get rebuilt. And you can see in just a matter of seconds, all my toolpaths are up to date and current with the new geometry without any additional selection required because the feature definitions are being used to define the toolpath. We'll backplot to take a look at how it looks, but everything looks fantastic. One more quick note, if you're ever working in SOLIDWORKS and you don't want to be constantly checking your toolpaths, maybe you've got a lot of design work you need to do, you can turn off associativity checking. With that option off, it won't check real time to see if anything's changed so that you can continue working and then when you're ready to resume and setting toolpaths, simply turn associativity checking back on and you'll get a full report of what has changed in the SOLIDWORKS model relative to your toolpaths.